Hello, my name is Mariana, and today this is a reading for Capricorn. So Capricorn, as usual, I'm doing a reading with my own tarot deck, so the cards that you see are from this deck. So Capricorn, before I begin with your reading, I should say that actually your message uh, feels very collective. And um, I was actually, you know, going to put this reading as... Um, a collective reading but since I'm using my regular tarot deck I thought I should stick with this reading for you especially because at the very end the last card is emphasizing the earthiness of your sign and I feel like um, there is a quality about you Capricorn that actually uh, Sen from Sen Tarot once mentioned and really uh, stuck with me and it's the fact that because you're an earth sign and it's like, you know, so grounded, so down to earth because you're so foreign, right? You're so from another planet, from another dimension, from another galaxy, that if you weren't this earthy, then you would fly off, right? You would simply, you know, drift away from this planet. So I feel like the message that is here is emphasizing your earthiness. That's why it's being directed through you or for you. Um, but it can be for the collective, for the human collective that inhabits the earth right now. Because it seems like your entire message, Capricorn, is like a story time. It's now story time and it really doesn't matter who is telling, right? Because it feels like, you know, other beings, a lot more, you know, ancient souls, old souls, the ones that have, you know, a more distant memory than our own as humans, right? Because if we think of um, the history of humanity and the history that we are taught in school, right? It's a very, it is ancient, but it's nothing compared to, you know, um, the real, let's say, story about, um, you know, Atlantis and Lemuria and, you know, these very, very old civilizations that are kind of lost in history, right? They're not integrated maybe because it's too out there, right? It's a knowledge that is too far off and it doesn't really fit the um, earthy mind, right? So, and maybe that's what's changing because maybe you Capricorn, maybe because you've always been very earthy, may, maybe even very skeptical about these things and now you're being you're being told a story or maybe you're being given a story, right? Maybe it's coming through you, through your own memories, through, through your own internal voice, right? Um, about this story of our planet, our world, Earth, right? This is how the first card is uh, coming up, the world card. So what I heard was, let's talk about your world, Capricorn. And of course, this can be, you know, your personal world, right? Your intimate world, how you relate to your own world or how you feel like you belong this planet. Um, but it felt broader. It felt like something that, you know, um, like, you know, an alien species that has the ability to, you know, um, remember everything about our own history as humanity right not just you know from the last couple or a few thousand years ago right i mean this is like really really ancient um and it feels like let's talk about the origins because the ace of pentacles coming next this was showing me uh, a seed so our planet being a seed a seed in the 3D, in the physical realm, and something that feels very, um, 
what is the word? It's like uh, in its infant stages, right? It's uh, it's like the our planet, and this is the story that you're being given or that you are remembering, perhaps Capricorn. Um, it's like let's talk about your world. Your world is the seed that is asleep, and I feel like because of the moon card. There's something about this dormant seed that this planet is or has been, right? For many, many moon cycles, right? Um, but waiting, waiting for... <sighs> so the way that it's coming through, and I know this may sound very you know, abstract for some, or maybe, you know, if you are skeptical, then, you know, perhaps you need more proof or even more time. It's like to tune in intuitively with something that is very, because it's never been told or because it's been forgotten or because it's been, um, you know, stripped away from our history books, right? Because it's too out there. Um, or too alien or too foreign or too abstract but there's something that is provable right there is evidence the seed and I want to say the seed be each of us because this is how it's ending actually but it's not it's not until this understanding comes to your mind that it fits that you are able to maybe feel in your body or feel in your mind or um, perceive yourself as the proof that you needed perhaps to know that this story that you're being told is true because it feels like this story of the earth, the story of the planet has to do with you know, the planet itself being a seed that has been asleep, right? A seed that has been asleep for many, many, many moon cycles in a liquid state, I want to say. And this gets stranger and stranger. But the Five of Cups here was talking about how planet Earth, you know, which is interesting because being this liquid state and the moon, you know, um, um, ruling or, you know, guiding in a sense, the tides and the water in the planet and, you know, this blue planet, right? Called earth, but being mainly made of water, right? It's like the earth and the water. So that's the reason why I feel like it's been asleep because the water, it's like the, it's almost like, you know, when you are um, in a beach and the only sound that you can hear is the sound of the waves. And it's almost like this lullaby, right? The sounds of the wave, the waves, they are, it's like a lullaby to put it, put us to sleep. And I feel like this has been in a way beneficial. It's like, the dormancy aspect of this liquid state whatever that means it's all it's like the way that i'm hearing it's a word in portuguese that i don't know how to translate in english it's um in balsamo and i'm i'm trying to see it's almost like this balm or i don't know how to translate it um it's like in in portuguese what i'm trying to say is you know when you in a lab, for instance, in a uh, science lab, where you want to um, make something last longer, right? It's like you put into a liquid state, into like a a bomb, a bo balsam. I don't know. I don't know how to say that in English, and I apologize for not knowing the word. If you know what I'm talking about, and you want to. Um, teach me what is this expression or what is this word um it's like but to to keep something in a in a dormant state right it, it's like in a like preserving something right when you 
even when you want to preserve food, right? It's like you have to put liquid, right? So that it lasts longer. You know what I mean? This is how I'm seeing it. Um, so now that you're being told this story, Capricorn, about the collective, about the human collective, how this planet is this seed, this earth seed that has been, you know, um, immersed in this water state, in this liquid form of the water, meaning it's been asleep, it's been, uh, you know, um, lulling to sleep so that something here that was passing through would not corrupt or would not um, disturb or would not um, turn, it's like turn the potential that the seed is holding, right? Because I feel like the moment that we realize that the planet itself is a seed, but also that we are the seeds of the planet, there's something that changes our perception because it's like, if it's been waiting to be planted, waiting to be awakened and grow, there's something that has been going on that feels like a stormy weather. The Eight of Swords here is just talking about like this very chaotic environment or like this windstorm, actually, it's how it's coming through. It's like this stormy weather that in order for us to go through the challenges or go through you know, eras of chaos and fight and war and battles and all of that. Um, it feels like a dense energy, but it's not dense in form, right? Because the, the earthy quality, the material aspect, the denser physical plane of the earth here, it was undergoing storms. It was undergoing shifts, perhaps. It was undergoing, because the way that I'm seeing the Eight of Swords, it's like I'm seeing this spinning, right? Very fast. It's almost like when you spin a coin or when you spin a die, uh, a dice, a dice, is that how you say it? Um, it's like I'm seeing this, like this seed was spinning, right? So fast because of the chaotic environment. And that's the reason why I feel like it's been purposely put to sleep in water because of the five of cups the cups is showing me the water liquid state right that you know our planet is mostly made of it's like the because the five is symbolizing the place so it's like yes it's the right place it's the right place for this seed maybe for the seed to be protected for the seed to be preserved right? In liquid state. I don't understand this. It's really out there, but I feel like it's, um, it's like, it's something that has been, you know, through many, many cycles of the moon, many millennia. There's something that has been taking its time to preserve something that is about to take shape in the physical form, in this 3D realm, but not until the storm has passed. Because I feel like there's something about the storm that is also, you know, okay, so it's interesting because it's going back to this science lab type of imagery. It's like, if you want to preserve something, it's like there's something about the cleansing and the purity of the seed so it's almost like, you know, when you unearth something and it comes, you know, when you take something from the earth, uh, I don't know, a, a carrot or something like that, right? It, I just said carrot because it, it's what I uh, saw, right? So if you take something from the earth, you want to clean it first. And so I feel like the stormy weather here, the windstorm in particular, which is how I'm seeing this, it's not been for nothing. It's not just been for, you know, uh, for the chaos to be, you know, uh, installed. And it's because with this spinning of this uh, particle, with the spinning of this seed, it was being cleansed. It was being, you know, the the debris were being removed, right? It's like the, the uh, it's like everything that was in excess or that was, you know, making this seed dirty 
was being removed, right? The storms, the wind storms were meant to cleanse. But the thing about this seed being kept then in this water state, in this um, submerged liquid state, right? It's like, it's because it needed to carry remembrance, right? It needed to carry memory. The water state, the liquid state of the water is because it carries memories. And I feel like this is important because the debris was being, you know, shoved and cleansed because of the wind. Even though it could have been, you know, a very agitated phase as, you know, we have seen in the last couple of years but it's like it feels longer right it feels like you know it feels to be honest like you know great storms that the earth has been through and it's it's almost like you know the the kind of like uh the ice age and then you know uh the great flood that you know many many cultures and religions talk about it feels that kind of stormy weather right however you want to see it um, so there's something that this seed, it's like, there's something special about it that this planet needed to preserve in a liquid state and undergo some sort of spinning, spinning of, spinning of the world itself, spinning of time perhaps, right? Um, so because in this cleansing and in this preserving phase in water something would brew inside humanity inside our minds it feels like the cleansing process earth undergoing you know floods and storms and hurricanes and windstorms and all of that the chaos but still the seed being preserved in the water it's like the seed was still intact because because of the memories that it was holding it's like the moment that it would reach the minds right of those people who were starting to wake up right from this dormant state right it's like it's been kept asleep for a reason because it was still being cleansed. It's like the the seed of this planet, because it was so pure, it needed to be preserved in a certain way, asleep in our minds, right? It's like, here is how the process of awakening starts. It's like, it starts with the Knight of, of Pentacles and then it evolves to the King of Pentacles. And so this card, the King of Pentacles has been you know, this very um, emblematic card from the last few collective readings, actually. Um, and so it was emphasizing to me, Capricorn, how your earthiness, the quality that you have that is so down to earth, that is so grounded, is incredibly um, beneficial for earth, for the planet, for our world. And it could be in a very individual, personal way, right? For your world. It's incredibly important that you keep yourself grounded, that you keep yourself um, down to earth and very objective and very practical. Dealing with your world in a way that is, um, it's like tending to the things in your day to day. Because ultimately what you're doing in a bigger scale is tending to the earth itself because in doing that it's like in the way that i'm seeing this especially with the knight of pentacles it's like the more you um and it's not contemplate but it's what i just heard but it's not what i meant to say but it came for some reason maybe you are contemplating your daily activities or your daily tasks with patience right you're not in a rush you're not hurrying up to finish everything that you need in your day right it's like you're contemplating how best you can perform or how best you can deliver your work right in terms of a daily 
activity, right? It's like the consistency of doing something every day. And this awareness, I want to say, maybe the contemplation of something that you um, that you want to do as best as possible. It's like you want to improve the quality of your work or you want to improve the quality of like how much you devote yourself, how much effort you put into something, right? It's like um, if it's something that you didn't have much experience with, it's like the more you practice, the more you improve, the more you mature how you do so. And th this could be, you know, a very simple thing. You know, it could be just, you know, cleaning your house, which could be, you know, similar to cleansing the seed, right? It's like, um, but, you know, being the Eight of Swords, it could, because also it's like the, here the imagery of, you know, the seeds in their uh, helmets and in the crown, um, it's talking about the seed being planted in the mind. And so I feel like the more chaos there is around your mind, maybe it's like it is um, also highlighting the fact that you have to organize your mind. It's like organize your mental space. The same way that you dedicate your time and your effort to cleansing your space, to you know, um, doing the best work that you can do, you know, with your daily tasks, then this is how you're going to perform in a sense or deliver a great um, performance, right? Um, or, you know, do your best Capricorn to overcome the chaos in your mind, right? It's like cleaning not only your physical space and, you know, finishing your work, as best as possible, but not in this uh, hurry to finish it, but do it, it's like the best way possible, right? But also with your mind. And that is the process that, you know, um, it's like this evolution of the seed that is being planted. It's like whatever this seed is symbolizing, and I feel like it has this, you know, far greater scope of understanding like the the jewel that our planet has or the jewel that our planet is in terms of you know being extremely fertile right or just being very um like a rich soil a rich like a uh, humanity is a rich soil right is the perfect way to plant these seeds right in our minds but we have to keep on working in our minds so that we are not in a sense um um immature or unexperienced right it's like there needs to be practice and you know this maybe the mental practice of you know clearing out the debris um and keeping keep on doing this work daily right the consistency that um um brings like the improvement brings the uh, perfection right brings the evolution the evolution in terms of the seed right the seed that is growing inside of our minds right to become the king of the earth right a more developed a more aware mind in regards to the planet that we inhabit, right? So it feels like this awakening process, right? At first, it started with the seed being asleep and being preserved in water. But then once it's planted in our minds and our minds start to wake up, then it starts to grow and develop and evolve in a way that it's being cleansed through the chaos, right? I hope this makes sense, Capricorn. I am going to pull more cards for you to see where this is going. And also I'm going to pull from the astrological rooms. So if you want to join me there, I'll be very happy to see you. You can find the link down below. If not, I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.